Yeah, look, I'm Nick Poole. I'm Managing Director of Field Applied Research or FAR Australia, um, and I'm based in Geelong. Well, I think when we think about spraying fungicides strategically, we need to know what our starting points are. So consider where you farm, what your farming system looks like. Is it full um, stubble retention? Once we know where you farm and your farming system, it will give you some idea with your advisor of what diseases you're most likely to encounter. Then consider the cultivar that you've planted or are planning to plant so that you can start to devise a strategy for the season that takes account of all of those factors. When it comes to spraying fungicides strategically, what we're looking to do is to say, well, what are the conditions that will encourage the disease in our region? Are we monitoring and making sure we know what's happening in our crop? Once we know that, when we monitor and we come to specific development points in the crop's life where we know we're likely to see more of a response from a fungicide than at other stages in the crop's life. So one of the things we're doing is not only managing to monitor the disease, but actually when we spray, ask ourselves strategically, is this a period where we will get our money back on that investment? When we look at the growing season, very often we can, we can, we can see disease all the way through the growing season. But there are certain times in the crop's life where the likelihood of an economic response in, in the yield that we gain from that crop is likely to be greater because what we're applying the fungicide to in terms of plant tissue is more important at some development stages than it is at other development stages. So the importance of fungicide application in terms of an economic response is to try and make sure we protect the most important leaves for grain fill, which tend to be the top four leaves in a cereal plant, in particular the top three. And we quite often refer to these leaves as the money leaves. They emerge through the stem elongation period of the cereal crop's life and it's then that we can maximise our economic returns from fungicide application. So as I say, the money, the money leaves in wheat, we tend to look at the top three in particular, potentially the top four leaves. The development stages that they emerge from are what we refer to as growth stage 30, through to flag leaf emergence, which is the last leaf that the crop canopy produces. If we can apply our fungicides to keep those leaves clean, principally the top three, then what that means is that those leaves will be in the best health to deliver contribution of carbohydrates to grain fill later in the season. So it's the top three and that stem elongation period that is most critical. For very susceptible varieties, there is sometimes a need to consider activity earlier than those money leaf emergence. And that's something we very often can do with measures that we take it sowing. For example, in furrow fungicides or seed treatments. When we're talking about barley as opposed to wheat, one of the things to remember with a barley crop is that the top leaf in barley, the flag leaf, is usually relatively small compared to in wheat where it's much larger. As a result, the contribution of the flag leaf to final grain field tends to be smaller. You may think that that completely changes the optimum timings, but because the flag leaf sheath in barley is a very important solar panel or money leaf for want of a better description or money stem. It actually means that 
usually it's still that stem elongation period that we have to concentrate on because although the flag leaf's small, the leaf sheath that's attached to the stem itself is much larger. We can very often, with very susceptible varieties, get disease development before the money leaves emerge in the tillerin phase. Because of the way that fungicides work, generally speaking, if we spray in that period, we can cut down the inoculum that feeds into the crop later in the season. But unfortunately, the yield payback from those leaves that we're spraying during tillerin is not as great as what we refer to as the money leaves. There are, in some circumstances, no choice because of disease outbreaks or very susceptible varieties to actually look at applying fungicide before the money leaves emerge at stem elongation. However, it's one of the things to remember is that when you spray foliar fungicides, pretty much what you hit is what you protect. And the leaves that you're protecting at that stage, if the disease pressure is maintained, what you can find is that you don't get as much payback from applying those fungicides then. And of course, because you've started spraying fungicides far earlier, you're now likely to be applying multiple sprays through the season, which is, we know, one of the aspects that in increases our resistance risk. So summarising, very susceptible varieties, sometimes we have no alternative but to actually control the disease before the money leaves emerge. Very susceptible stripe rust varieties. That may actually, though, we found from our research, be better handled with flutriophole or something in furrow that protects you until the money leaves come out. Different modes of action are incredibly important to us when disease pressure is high. It means that we've got two different ways of killing the fungus and therefore if one is slightly compromised then the other is going to help us or that we get less opportunity for survival if we're using two modes of action. However, in fungicide terms, we only have three modes of action. And the backbone of most of our disease strategies are what we call the DMIs, the group three triazoles or DMIs. Those materials, when we're under high pressure, it can be very beneficial to mix two modes of action. So mix the DMI with uh, what we call a QOI or a strobal urine or mix it with an SDHI in order to get better disease control. However, those two modes of action, the QOIs and the SDHIs, are themselves at risk of resistance development and they're at higher risk, very generally, of resistance development than the DMIs. So yes, we mix when we're under higher pressure, but if we feel that we have to use more fungicide just to achieve a mixture and the disease pressure is very low, then that may actually not always be advantageous. And that's where sometimes under low disease pressure and low selection pressure, just a straight DMI as we used to do 15 years ago may actually still have a place. So rotations uh, are, are good for fungicides, mixtures are good for fungicides, but best of all is to use other measures so that we, we can actually use less fungicide application. So in terms of fungicide resistance, one of the things that we're really um, trying to avoid is multiple applications all the way through the season to control the disease. And unfortunately, sometimes the earlier we start controlling disease by spraying, the more fungicides we're likely to apply. Now, in a good season, when we really need our fungicides to protect our money leaves, we may well have already applied 
two fungicides by the time we get to the money leaves coming out. So I think what we're trying to urge use of is, is many different ways of controlling disease through variety, through sowing date, cultural practice, so that we can generally reduce the number of applications we make to the crop. More fungicide applications through the season on a regular basis, the more likelihood is that we've got to repeat those modes of action and we've only got three. The question is always asked, should we be applying fungicide preventatively or as curative materials? The fact is that they work better as preventative. The strategic point there is to recognise that applying them preventatively to the right plant leaves can be more economic and more important. So all fungicide applications work better as protectants rather than curatives. What we need to do is to make decisions on what the most important tissue is to protect. And that's going all the way back to the money leaves and when you can best get a return on your investment. I, I think the overall picture behind fungicide resistance is to recognise that the more disease control we can achieve with our genetics, our farming system, um, our sowing dates. In other words, genetic resistance to disease, cultural practice, anything that we can do to reduce the disease pressure in itself takes the pressure off the fungicides and importantly off the number of fungicides that we might use. So less fungicide use, particularly if that less fungicide use we're also making sure that we're changing the active ingredients that we use on a regular basis. We don't want to use less fungicide and then repeat use the same one, but if we can use those integrated disease management measures, as we call them, genetics, cultural practices, all of that helps to mean that we would apply less fungicide applications, which means we should be able to use those fungicides for longer in the future. There's only three fungicide groups out there and nobody's racing to provide us with new modes of action.